We are in module five and we're doing section B today. In section A, we solved polynomial equations which used our factoring skills we talked about and our quadratic skills and our linear skills. Today, we're going to be doing section 5B, which is radical equations. And although the equation looks different because it has a radical symbol in it, you're still going to see us using our quadratic and our linear skills here also. So let's go to our notes. Okay, guys. A, rational, a radical equation means it has a radical symbol, which is a root symbol. And it could have a square root, a cube root, or any root higher. Um, the ones that we mostly deal with in college algebra are square roots. So we're going to be doing radical equations with square root symbols in them. Well, you've already know this basic common sense. Think back to algebra 1. When you solved a basic linear equation and it had parentheses in it, a symbol in it, did we not get rid of it by distributing? So what we're going to have to learn to do today is if our equation has a root symbol in it, we're going to have to get rid of it. Okay, so let's go to the board and look at uh, our first equation. All right, so if you look, our equation is square root of x equals x minus 6. It is obvious this is a radical equation. Radical is another word for root, so it contains a root symbol in it. Now, just like every other equation we dealt with, there is a procedure you have to follow to solve this. Okay. Think back to it. When we're doing algebra 1 and we have an equation with parentheses, the first thing we do is distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So in this radical equation, our first step is going to be we're going to have to get rid of that root symbol. That's the problem. Think of the root symbol like a house. And think of this letter X being stuck inside the house. And we want to free it. See, right now we can't put this X with this X. Because this X is inside a symbol and this X is not. So we can't combine them. So the moral of the story is going to be to solve a radical equation, we're going to have to get rid of the symbol, the house. In order to do that, our first step in the note says it has to be isolated. What does isolate mean? That's right, it's got to be by itself. So to get rid of the root symbol, it's got to be by itself, which it is. What you're going to do is to get rid of this square root symbol. Square rooting is an operation. Every operation has an opposite and inverse. We've been seeing now in every module, the opposite of adding is to subtract. The opposite of multiplying is to divide. The opposite of squaring, when we had the x squareds for quadratics, is square rooting. So the opposite of square rooting is going to be to square. So the procedure is you first isolate the root. Get the root symbol on the left side by itself. The next is you do the opposite. The opposite of square rooting is squaring. And if you square the left side, you have to balance and square the right side. Now look very closely at how I've written this. I put one square on the left and one square on the right. That keeps balance. You cannot put this square in both spots. That would be two squares and that wouldn't balance. We all know that squaring and square rooting are opposites. So they undo each other. They cancel each other out. That leaves us good old x. And that's what we want it. We want to free x. I normally think about this symbol square root as a house. And this guy is trapped inside the house because the house is on fire. And to put out the fire, you need your fireman. Your fireman is the square. So to get rid of the symbol square root, you square. Now, here's where the problems come in. From algebra, what does it mean when you write x minus 6 squared? Well, that means x minus 6 times x minus 6. And if you look closely now, the root symbol is gone, which means we are no longer a radical equation. Well, now we've got to follow our gut. What are we supposed to do? Well, we've learned you always get rid of parentheses. To get rid of parentheses here, we're going to multiply doing the FOIL method. Remember, when you're multiplying binomials, it's distributing, and it's called FOIL. So first is going to be x times x, x squared. Outers are going to be x times negative 6, negative 6x. Inners are going to be negative 6 times x, negative 6x. Last is going to be negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. And remember, we discussed this several times. 
if you put your eyeballs above the subtraction signs, you should make the smiley face if you do fall correctly. So the biggest problem you guys are going to have is not the new thing, learning to get rid of a square root you square. It's actually performing the algebra. How do you square a binomial? You do FOIL. If you look very closely now, this equation is no longer radical. You changed it. It has an x squared. So now you have a quadratic equation. You went from college algebra to algebra 2. Now, what's your first gut say to do? That's right. It says to collect like terms. Negative 6x and negative 6x add to negative 12x. Because this is a quadratic equation, you're in the driver's seat. You have to make a decision. Do you want to solve this, factoring it? Do you want to do the square root method? Do you want to do complete the square? Or do you want to do the quadratic formula? Again, in my rule of thought here, I always want to go with the easiest method. 9 times out of 10, most quadratics can factor. But to factor, they have to be set equal to, very good, 0. Is this set equal to 0? No. So we're going to move the x by subtracting. There's the 0. I have x squared, a negative 12x, and a negative 1x is negative 13x. And now, guys, because it's equal to 0, let's see if it factors. Do we have a GCF? No. Is the difference of perfect squares? No. Is it a trinomial? 1, 2, 3. Three terms in the correct order? Yep. So we're going to put two parentheses. What multiplies the x squared? x times x. What can multiply to 36? Oh my, we have an abundance of options. We have 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, 6 times 6. Do you get to go eeny, meeny, miny, mo and pick the option you like? No, you do not. You have to read. I want to multiply to 36. I want to add to 13. Does 1 and 36 add to 13? No. Does 2 and 18 add to 13? No. Does 3 and 12 add to 13? No. Does 4 and 9 add to 13? Yes. Now, I want to add to a negative 13. Adding means the signs have to be the same. Add to a negative, they're both negative. And this is still set equal to 0. Don't ever forget that. So now you went from being quadratic, the x squared, to being linear. What you've done is magic. You went from a college algebra equation to back to algebra 1. You have two x's now. So I'm going to come over here. You're going to take both of those, set them equal to 0, and solve each linear equation. So your first solution is 4 and your second solution is 9. So if you look, guys, it's not that you're learning a lot of new information. You're really using your algebra skills you've been taught already. That's why college algebra is so difficult. I really got to know that you mastered how to solve linears and quadratics. Now, here's the difference between being in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and being college algebra. You have two lovely solutions here. Just like we talked about with rational equations, fractions, in radical equations, there's no guarantee these are both the right answer. As you all know, what number can you not square root? That's right. You can't square root a negative because it won't be real. It will be a imaginary. So you're going to learn. We're going to put a check mark when you're dealing with a radical equation. You must always check your solutions for extraneous. Remember what extraneous means? It means it's useless. Extraneous means you have a useless answer. You have to throw it in the garbage. Just like in real life, your appendix is useless organ. That's why if it gets infected, they just pull it out. It's extraneous. So you got to keep in mind when you're solving a radical equation, when you're done solving, you're really not done. You always must check. How do you check your solutions? That's right. You go back to the original equation. This was the original equation. You don't go to the equation where you got rid of the radical sign. You go back to the original. How do you check? One value at a time. So this would be the square root, we're going to check 4 first, equals 4 minus 6. What is the square root of 4? 2. And 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Does that check? Does that balance? 
No. So this is your extraneous answer, which means you're throwing it in the garbage. It's useless. Four is not the answer. Now we've got to check and see if nine works. So again, we're going to go back to the original equation. Where there's an x, we're going to put nine. Where there's an x, we're going to put nine. What's the square root of nine? Three. What's nine minus six? Three. Does that check? Yes. So here we go. We're really now in real college algebra. Just because you solve and get solutions doesn't guarantee they're always the answer. You're going to have to do checks on certain equations. We saw it with equations with fractions, rationals. You have to check to make sure the denominator doesn't become zero. Now with roots, radicals, you got to check to make sure we balance. So the only solution here is x equals 9. And that's the whole process. All right, I think we have one more to try. So let's erase this. It is very easy in college algebra to make an itty bitty mistake and be totally off. And I know that's frustrating, but that's part of being in college algebra. You have to be very careful with details. All right, if we look at our notes, here's our other radical equation. It's square root of x plus 18 plus 2 equals x. So this is called a radical equation because it has a root symbol in it. You cannot take this 2 and add it to the 18 because the 18 is inside the symbol, the 2 is not, so they can't get together. Same thing, you can't put this x with this x. This x is in the symbol, this is not. So my analogy in real life, the x plus 18 is stuck in the symbol. It's stuck in a house on fire. Well, to put out the fire, we're going to have to get that, the fireman in. Here's the problem. There's a plus 2 on the left side. Is it inside the square root symbol? It's not. So the rule is to solve a radical equation, you have to isolate the root. This is what's in the root. It's got to be isolated, which means this 2 has got to move. In real life, think about this. Your neighbor's house is on fire. So you stand there on your cell phone, you call the fire department to come in and put out the fire. Are the firemen going to let you stand by the house as they put out the fire? No. They're going to tell you, would you please cross the street? Get to the other side. So that's why the rule is, the procedure here is to solve a radical equation, you isolate the root. So this 2 has got to move over first. So we move the 2. We have square root of x plus 18 equals, we write this in the correct descending order, x minus 2. Now that we can't move anything else to get rid of a square root, we do the opposite. We square. And if we square the left side, we square the right side. That's like the fireman coming to put out the fire. Squares and square roots are opposite operations. They're inverses, so they cancel out. That leaves you x plus 18. Here's where the boo-boo is going to be. You're not going to take your time and really think. This is x minus 2 squared. To square a binomial, you have to write it twice because you're going to do FOIL. Because we learned you don't solve an equation with parentheses. So we're going to FOIL. First term is x squared. Outer term is negative 2x. Inner term is negative 2x. Last term is positive 4. Now look closely. Do you see a square root symbol? No, you don't. It's no longer radical. You made it into another equation that you already know. It has an x squared. So that means this is a quadratic. Well, you have four decisions. Do you set it equal to zero and factor it? Do you move terms over and square root it? Do you do the complete the square method? Do you use the formula? Again, I'm telling you, we're going to try to do it the easiest way possible. The two easiest ways to solve a quadratic is either factoring or square rooting. I always think about factoring first. So to factor, the equation's got to be set equal to 0. So we have to move the x by subtracting. We have to move the 18 by subtracting. And I'm putting all the like terms together. So these terms are going to cancel. There's the 0. I bring down the x squared. Negative 2x, negative 2x, and negative 1x is negative 5x. 4 minus 18 is negative 14. So I get it set equal to 0. Does it factor? Sure. It's a trinomial. So I'm going to put my two parentheses. x squared is x times x. 
What can multiply to 14? 1 and 14, 2 and 7. I needed to subtract to 5, so it's got to be the 2 and the 7. Subtract means the signs have to be different. You do not subtract things that are alike. So to subtract, one sign's positive, one sign's negative. We've talked about this. Subtract means whatever's in the middle gets the larger. This sign goes to the larger. So the 7 becomes negative, the 2 becomes positive. Negative 7 plus 2 would subtract to make a negative 5. And don't forget your equal 0. Now you're not quadratic. Every quadratic makes two linear equations. So we'll write our two linear equations. And I'm going to remind you all, you never see Ms. Black doing anything in her brain. I'm doing it all on paper so I don't make a careless mistake. I suggest you do the same. So our first solution is negative 2. And our second solution is positive 7. But wait, are you done? You have to get memorized in your brain that when you're solving a radical equation, you always must check the solutions. It's not an option. These may be extraneous. They may not check. So to check, we go back to the original equation. And that's important. You go back to the original. We talked about checking. You do not move any terms when you check. It's like doing your checkbook. You add up your credits, you add up your debits, and you hope they balance. You work the left side, you work the right side, and you hope it balances. You don't move anybody. All you're doing is replacing this variable with the number. So now we're going to replace x with negative 2. And over here's an x. We're going to replace it with negative 2. And now we're going to work. To work a root, you've got to have one number in here. So negative 2 plus 18 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Does 6 equal negative 2? No. That tells you this answer is extraneous. It's useless. We throw it in the garbage. So now you've got to check the other one. Don't assume that they're both going to check. They both could be thrown in the garbage. And then you would have no solution. So we're going to check the other one. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a 7 now. So I'm going to erase all this. So instead of having x, we're going to put 7 plus 18 plus 2 equals 7. We've got to get one number inside a symbol. So 7 and 18 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 equals 7. That checks. There's your solution. So to sum it up, to solve a radical equation, you isolate the symbol. You square both sides. And then it's going to probably become linear and quadratic, and you're going to follow through. Okay, I'll see you in Module 5C. Bye.